G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel, I'm Josh. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to work out the cube root of any number. Fairly quickly too, and these don't have to be perfect cubes, it works for any number. So, what about an example? We're going to work out the cube root of 70. That is to say, we're looking for what number you multiply by itself three times to give the answer of 70. So, you want a couple more seconds to work this out? Okay, you should be done. The answer is 4.12. And if you got that, congratulations. That's awesome because that's the correct answer. But if you didn't, well, sit up straight and listen because I'm going to show you right now how to do it. So a couple of things. This trick requires you to have a bit of a working knowledge of perfect cubes. That is, you're going to need to know these guys right here. These are the perfect cubes from 1 through to 10. And we're going to use these to get our answer. So do what you have to do to remember them. Get a tattoo, write them down on your forehead in permanent marker, whatever. Also, it's worth noting that whilst this trick is fairly accurate, it's not 100%. So just be aware, you're going to get fairly good answers, but they're not going to be exact, exact, exact. Okay? Just keep that in mind. So the way this trick works is as follows. We're looking for the cube root of 70. So for the first step, and there are three steps in doing this particular trick, the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to be seeing which one of our cubic numbers over here that you have memorized is closest to 70. So nice and easy, you can see that the cube number that is closest to 70 is this one here. Uh, we have the cube root of 64, which is equal to 4. And we're going to be using this 4 not only for the first part of our answer, that is the first part of our answer, but for the third part of our answer, we'll be getting back to that. To get the second part of our answer, what we do is we look at the difference between 70 and 64. The difference between 70 and 64, as you can see, 70 is 6 more then 64. This part is the second part of our answer. And this all goes over, well, the third part of our answer, which as I said, we're going to be using this 4 for. We get this 4 and we do a couple of things to it. We square it and then we multiply it by 3. And that will give us the final part of our answer. 4 squared is 16. Multiplied by 3 is equal to 48. So we have 4 and 6 over 48. And that is our answer. But let's just tidy it up, simplify it a little bit. So let's just see what that is. So we have 4, now 6 over 48. This simplifies and we divide 6 into both the numerator and the denominator. We get 1 eighth. And we can now put this as a decimal because 1 eighth is equal to 4.125. So that's our answer. Now how accurate were we on this one? The actual cube root of 70 is 4.125. So as you can see, we're pretty close. A little bit out, but I reckon you'll agree it's pretty good, right? So we'll just go through those steps again, those three steps that you have to do in order to work this out. So first off, what you're going to do is you're going to find the perfect cube, which is closest to the number that we're looking for. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the difference between those two numbers there. Then finally, we're going to do the squaring and multiplying by three of that whole number. So let's go through, have a look at a couple more examples, and I'll even give a couple of these that you can try. And by the way, if you like this trick, you know what to do. Hit the like button and remember to subscribe. So I'll just rub this out and we will get to another question. This one's going to be a little bit different and then I'm going to give you a few that you can try. So what about we work out the cube root of 100? So remember those steps? The very first one. We went through and we found the cube that was as closest to 100 over here. So watch one of these perfect cubes here is as close to 100 as we can get. And as you can see, it's this one here. We have the cube root of 125 is equal to 5. There we go. First part of our answer, done. Now what we do is we compare 100 to 125. Now doing this, we can see that 100 is less than 125. It's 25 less than 125. So over here, I'm going to put negative 25. Okay, this will just require a little bit of playing around at the end. Now to get the final part of our answer, we get our 5 here, and we square it, and then multiply it by 3. So 5 squared is equal to 25, multiplied by 3, we get the answer of 75. Now we can go through and simplify this a little bit, uh, and then we'll almost be done. So as you can see here, uh, both 25 goes into 25 and 75 here, so this could simplify through to 5, and we'd have this negative one here over three. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we're literally gonna treat this like five minus one third. So what is five 
minus one third. That's going to give us our answer. So our answer is going to be four and two over three. So you've just got to modify it a little bit if you have this comparison where this number is less than this one. So we could go through and work out the decimal. It's pretty easy. It's going to be 4.67. So how does this compare to the actual answer? Well, if you were to work out the cube root of 100, you would see that the answer is 4.64. Okay, not as close as the last question, but still pretty good, right? So what about a couple of examples for you to try? The first one I'll get you to work out is the cube root of uh, 33, lots of threes there. And the second one's going to be the cube root of 207. So pause the video, give these a go, and come back and see how you've gone. You done that yet? All right, so let's first off have a look at the cube root of 33. Now that first step, we look for a perfect cube that is as close to 33 as we can get. So as you can see here, the closest number to 33 is this one here. Uh, we have the cube root of 27, which is equal to three. That's the first part of our answer. Now what we do is we look at the difference here. So we have 33 take away 27. So uh, 33 is six more than 27. So this is positive six. So that's going to be a six. And that goes over this number here where we square it and multiply by three. So three squared is nine, multiplied by three is 27. Now, as you can see, we could leave it like that, but we could simplify this a little bit further because three goes into both six and 27. This simplifies into three and two over nine. Now, what's that equal to as a decimal? Well, we could work it out. It would be 3.22. Now, how's it compared to the actual answer? The actual answer is three. 0.21. So that's pretty good, right? Hopefully you did okay with that one. What about we give the second one a go? So we have the cube root of 207. So the first step, what we do is we look for the closest perfect cube to 207. So over here, the closest perfect cube is this one here, 216, where the cube root of 216 is equal to 6. Cool. All right. So now we compare the difference here, 207 and 216. So 207 is less than 216. In fact, it is nine less than 216. So over here, we're going to have negative nine. This goes over where we get this six, we square it and we multiply it by three. So six squared is 36, multiplied by three is 108. Cool, so we could go through and we could uh, simplify this a little bit because nine goes into both of these. This would become negative one over 12. So now what we have is we could just finish this off. Uh, we have six minus one twelfth. This is going to be five and 11 over 12, which as a decimal is going to equal 5.92. So if we go through and work that out on a calculator, What's the actual answer? Well, it's very much the same. It's 5.92. That one's exact there. So there you go. That's how you go through and work out the cube root of any number. Well, pretty instantly. Hopefully I didn't get too many mistakes everywhere, but if I did, get in the comments and flame away. But if I didn't make any mistakes, what about you leave something nice? Anyway, big shout out as usual to my subscribers and my patrons. Thank you for your support. If you wish to become a patron of the Tech Math channel, there is a link in the description below and your support is always, always appreciated. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.